Let's get to last night. A couple of fun, exciting games on the slate. We will start with the Habs and Leafs. Guess what? 2 on 0 in OT. You better score. And the Habs <laughs> did. Caulfield to Suzuki for the W as the Habs live and keep their series alive or their season alive for at least one more game. Game six back in Montreal. 2,500 fans in yep. the building. Is that scary for Leafs fans? I can tell you it is. They are freaking out. They're, they're freaking out. There's too many wounds. There's too many scars from a life of no winning. Yeah. Uh, the Leafs looking to punch their ticket to the second round for the first time since 2004. It has been a while. But EJ, as I mentioned, 2-1-0 in yeah. overtime. Yeah. If they didn't score, we'd probably be criticizing the Habs right Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm happy that those, because those are two young players, mm -hmm. Caulfield and Suzuki. They almost go offside. And then they're both <laughs> right shot players. So, you know, that could have gone bad a number of different ways. So I am happy that they scored there for their own career's sake, that they don't have to look at a tape of that for the next 10 or 15 years. But... Let's take a look at the winner here. And, like, the game was sloppy on both sides. The, uh, you know, it was a 3 nothing lead. The Leafs came back. But you look at overtime. It's early in overtime. Like, here comes Bogosian down the wall like, like he's Victor Hedman. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, it's early in the overtime. Okay, it comes back to Galchenyuk here, who's now should identify that my defenseman just went in. And he just turns and just throws it across. And you just got to be better than that in this situation. And it creates the 2 on 0 that we talked about. And then the Montreal Canadiens finish. They stay on side, fortunately, and they get it. But there again, I mean, you can see Galchenyuk never really even looked. It was a panic move. That's what it was. Uh, you to know me, what? that's a player under pressure that is not used to being under pressure, and he made a mistake. Yeah, and I think, again, Bogosian there. I know that we want to activate the D and get in there and try to, you know, there's times to pinch. And there's players that we want pinching. Bogosian, not necessarily one of them lots. I mean, not a speed demon. He's there to be a physical force and be a defender. He comes charging in there. He doesn't get the puck. It does come to Galchenyuk, and he just, as Jackie said, he just panics. He turns around. You can't throw it through the middle like that, and uh, the Canadians took full advantage. But just a, just a dreadful sequence there for the Leafs. Yeah, it was a dreadful sequence, but I do think that Sheldon Keefe will be able to use it as a teaching moment. Whether or not maybe we don't see some players, a couple of players really struggled for Toronto. I'd expect some changes in their lineup. Galchenyuk, that play right there, I'm sure they'll take a long, hard look at it. But it's a teaching moment in the sense of I don't believe that the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Jackie will be happy to hear this, are done this year. I don't believe we'll be saying they haven't made the playoffs or won a playoff round since 2004. So I think they'll learn from it. I think they're going to get through this series. It's not going to be easy. They put themselves in a little bit of a bind. But uh, they, they've got to find a way to use this moment moving forward to say, look, guys, when we get in overtime, smart plays. That really was a, a silly play by Gelchenyuk. There's no reason or way he should have been throwing that puck. And Cole Caulfield, who's just a rookie, just out of the NCAA University of Wisconsin, read that one from a mile away, stepped into it, and him and Suzuki were gone. And I love the fact that Cole Caulfield, who's an awesome sniper, he's a shooter. When he had a chance to take it himself, he read that play in terms of Jack Campbell, moved it back across to Suzuki, and of course he finishes, finishes it off. And we don't have to be talking about this for 10 years in a negative <laughs> way. So good on them. Good yeah. for the Montreal Canadiens. Good teaching moment for Sheldon Keefe. I'd like to say for the record that I'm not at all worried. So there you go. I'm I, not, like I am not <laughs> one of the people that thinks the sky is falling right. uh, for the Toronto Maple and, Leafs. And for the viewers, that is not a false bravado. Thank you. She has felt that way all day. And, uh, <laughs> and, and no, but I mean, because some people think, well, I'm just going to. I'm just putting on a show. No, you're not. You've felt very calm. And I think you should be, because, I mean, look at the tape. I mean, Montreal's not doing anything that great either. No, no. Well, I think this has to be sure. better. There was a lot of things in this game yeah. uh, that lead me to that, that make me not worried about the Toronto Maple yeah. Leafs because I think the end result is a lot of just mistakes by the Leafs. I'm not yeah. sure that the Montreal Canadiens came out and played such a great game that the Leafs just yeah. lost a hard-fought battle. I think, as Jason Spezza said this morning at the skate, he said, you know, we're gifting them offense. The, yep. there, a lot of their offense and their goals have come from bad plays on us. And yep. I hate to pick on Rasmus Sandin. He was taken out of the 
lineup in game four, put back in the lineup for game five, and he didn't look so great on a couple of those yeah. goals to the point that he sat on the bench, had one shift over a 15-minute span uh, at one point for him. So I expect Sandino probably come out of the lineup. Uh, and Dermott will go back in for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but Sandin's a young, inexperienced player. He was taken out of the lineup in Game 4. You could argue that maybe that hurt his confidence a little bit to be sat and then brought back in, but I think that the Montreal Canadiens took advantage uh, of a player that couldn't really handle the heavy forecheck that the Montreal Canadiens brought last night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. But uh, I'm going to ask you this, Lots, because I know <laughs> it's going to get you fired up, but really quick. Is this, is this a situation where down the road, when this series is over, if Toronto wins the series, as they should, because I think they're the better team, where Montreal looks back and is like, man, that Caulfield kid yeah. really comes up in the yeah. big moments. I yeah. wonder if things maybe would have been different if we had him play the first couple games. Yeah. Uh, you always, if Montreal does not go on and win this series, yes, they will sit down as a management team and a coaching staff and reflect on how they did. And I think they will look back on that particular choice unfavorably. Very much so the way I think they will look back and perhaps wish that Romanoff had played the games as well. That one has got me right from the get-go. But uh, Cole Caulfield, th this kid's a winner. He's proven already that he can play in the National Hockey League. Just the way he's burst onto the scene, how he's handled everything. Aside from the assist to Suzuki there, there were other plays in this game where he does things that maybe one or two other forwards on their team can do. I just don't think a team that is bereft of talent up front the way Montreal is can afford to not have a guy with his skill level. That's proven he can also be responsible. Not the biggest guy, but all you need to do is be in the right places. And he's proven he could do that. So I think they'll look back and say, you know what? That's not going to happen again with this guy. He's going to be playing regularly from here on out. And he should develop into really a staple of a player for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, back-to-back -back OT winners to start his career in the regular season and now an assist on a pretty yeah. big OT winner for yeah. the Montreal Canadiens. Keeps their season alive. William Nylander continues to be huge for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Five points now in the five games. He's got four goals. And it's, it's starting to cause some discussion in Toronto that maybe Sheldon Keefe should have upped Nylander's ice time in this series because if you look at the stars on the Toronto Maple Leafs and how much playing time they got you'll notice that there's quite a drop off between that top line of Matthews Marner and Hyman to Nylander who played my math's not great but about seven minutes less than yeah. those top tier players Nylander's got all these points he's clearly the hottest leaf going in terms of offense but if you actually look at the numbers for that top line of Matthews, Marner, and Hyman, I think you might feel a little bit differently because as good as Nylander has been, this top line, this is, these are numbers for Matthews, Marner, and Hyman, they've been on the ice for zero goals against. And while they've only combined for a couple of goals, they are out shooting Montreal by a lot. We don't have Montreal's numbers on here, unfortunately. But it's, it's a drastic, drastic difference. I mean, when that line is on the ice, they are in the offensive zone the majority of the time. They're out shooting, out chancing from all areas of the ice. They're just not getting the finish. And I think we could probably credit a lot of that to someone like Carey Price, who's been really good in this series. Yeah, so I, I think you're absolutely right. They just pump the brakes. Those guys are going to start scoring because they're, they're, they got the puck all the time. Yeah, they're, they're too good. And they, the numbers there indicate they are playing well. And that happens in the playoffs lots. You see it from time to time. Guys could be playing really well, and they may not be getting the results. And because we're so dialed into every game, we're waiting for those points like you get in the regular season. It's just not as easy. The Montreal Canadiens are trying to focus on those guys as best they can, and they got a pretty good goalie in there that's also stopped a lot of good opportunities. Yeah, a small sample size. Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, they're getting a bit of a rough ride as opposed to what they got in the regular season, just like Connor McDavid did, quite frankly, against Winnipeg. So not necessarily shocking, but I agree with you, Jackie, where Sheldon Keith may have maybe just dropped the ball a little bit, was not getting Nylander more involved on that top unit. Agreed. Had a guy that's Agreed. That hot. You know, and no Preach. disrespect to some of the Hall of Fame <laughs> players. They rolled out there as a fourth forward, but my goodness, go to the hot hand, just like you do in the goaltenders. Do it with the forwards as well. He should have been on the first power play unit. I'd be shocked if he isn't next game. And a lot of this is born out of the fact that, of course, John Tavares is not available.
All right, tell them lots. I agree with you on that power play point. Uh, but let's move on to the other game last All night. Right.